G'day everybody, we've got another used review today. Reason we're doing this one is I've just been reminded recently that it's been about 12 months since I bought this thing. Uh, a bit of it over that I think. Um, and that's generally when I like to review something after I've been, had a chance to use it for a while uh, and, and, see, um, and see how good it is. So we're talking scan tools today uh, and also uh, OBD readers. So traditionally, uh, prior to 12 months ago, you know, I was pretty much uh, if I can find it, here it is. So I was pretty much using one of these, which is a Bluetooth OBD reader. So you just plug this into your OBD port uh, and this will communicate. In this case, this is an Xtrons, uh, an Xtrons unit, which is the same brand as my uh, head unit. So I've got Xtrons head units in all my cars. Uh, and I, you know, for $10, $15 extra, I think, you can buy one of these with the head unit. Uh, plug it in and just as cheap insurance, but we'll get to that later on. Uh, it was, it seemed to make sense to do it. And this actually reads on my Xtron's head unit. Um, you know, if I open the OBD app, the OBD app that comes with the Xtron's head unit, it's an Android interface on these head units that I run. Check the other video for that. There's a review of them. It comes with a, uh, with a well-known OBD uh, app and it comes with the paid version rather than the free version, which is a good thing because if you buy the head unit, it's not a major cost, but it'll save you a few dollars uh, because the app's already installed uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the head unit, so you can get access to the paid version. Now that's good for reading codes uh, in most cases, although there are, I've found there's some limitations, which is some of, one of the reasons why I went to a, a different scan, uh, scan tool. But I found they're very, quite good for reading codes, clearing most codes, but there were some limitations with them that, um, that I wasn't, there was some functionality I wanted. It allows you to read some live data depending on the car. So they're quite good for $15, they're a bargain, absolute bargain. You don't need the head unit, and you don't need the official branded ones from, in this case, Xtrons, but you don't need the official uh, branded ones. You can buy one from Amazon or eBay or wherever, plug it into your OBD port, and you can connect it to it. If you've got an Android or iOS phone, you can connect it to that, download a uh, uh, OBD app, and you can get data, clear codes, and all that sort of stuff. I've found no problems with the Xtrons unit, but I'm not necessarily advocating for their use only. There's a whole bunch of manufacturers for these things, and they're very cheap, um, and uh, they could be a good option for you. But in my case, I found that it was uh, getting a bit inadequate. For what I wanted because I wanted to, it, it wouldn't read all codes on all vehicles. If someone brought a car to me, um, I couldn't necessarily get the codes uh, on some vehicles. It was pretty good, you know, probably about 90%, but some vehicles, I might have even been higher than that, but there were some vehicles that it wouldn't read and that's annoying. And there's some codes it wouldn't clear. So you get the code error, fix the problem, go to clear it, and the unit wouldn't clear the code. Uh, and I'd have to go borrow a scan tool uh, to clear it. So I had a look around at scan tools and you can get the basic handheld unit with a, um, with a basic monochromatic LCD screen, you know, from places like, you know, Super Cheap Auto, Repco, Auto Pro, Auto Barn, that sort of thing, uh, from, you know, some reputable manufacturers like Bosch or SP Tools. But pretty much I didn't see that they, and a, fr a couple of friends of mine have got them and I borrowed them just to test them out. Didn't really seem to give me any more functionality than this. So paying two, three hundred dollars for one of those with an official branding to be a, a, a fully, um, you know, complete unit that plugs in and reads your codes, you know, but didn't actually really give me any more functionality than this. Didn't really seem like a very wise purchase. So I started to have a look at what other scan tools were available. Uh, there's certainly software options that you can, uh, better software options that are, are value of more services than this, so that's an option. Um, uh, I had a look there, some subscription services and some high value software and app based services going in. Uh, so I figured well, I may as well get a reader as well. And I came across Launch Brand uh, and Launch Brand had got some you know, reasonably good reviews online. Uh, it seems that Launch had been sending some free samples out to people uh, for them to review. And so you take, you know, you, hopefully they give an honest review. The reviews were mostly positive, but they did get an OBD reader for free. So I suppose there's a little bit of a grain of salt that you have to apply there. But the reviews seem reasonably positive and certainly for the money, um, I couldn't fault their, their value proposition if they worked. So I ended up deciding that I'd go with Launch. Now then that meant 
which model do I get? There is a heap of different models. So the reason it took me so long to get a scan tool of my own outside of just using these things was because I wanted to make sure I had you know, a list of all the things that I wanted to do. Because with some OBD readers, uh, they can do this thing, this thing, this thing. And if that's all the things that you want to do, great, that could be a very good option for you. But if you want to do this, 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 and this, and it'll only do three of all those things, well then maybe that's not a good buy. So I wanted to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I had some critical things. Um, and for example, just an example, one of the critical things that I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to code injectors. So I had to fit a set of diesel injectors to my old Ranger, I don't have it anymore, but my old Ranger, and I couldn't code the injectors, so I had to borrow a scan tool to code the injectors so that the vehicle would run right. Um, it was annoying that I had to borrow a scan tool. So I knew I wanted to do that. That was a critical thing. There was a couple of other critical things that I wanted the scan tool to do. Uh, and, and the good thing about launch, I guess, is that all the different models, you can choose the functionality you want. So if you want all the functionality, you're going to pay for a higher priced unit. If you want less functionality, you're going to get a cheaper unit. And the unit I went to uh, was this one, which is a CRP479. Still got the original box. There's the original box. Um, the CRP479. Um, it's got a 5-inch touchscreen. Uh, it runs an Android operating system. So if you're, if you're au fait with Android, this should come very naturally to you. Um, OBD2 reader, it's got uh, live data, you can print it out. Um, it's got an internet connection, Wi-Fi, uh, with firmware updates and software updates. Uh, data, it'll record data, it'll play it back to you. Um, and to go back to my previous critical item, uh, it would do all the critical things that I wanted in a scan tool, uh, including coding injectors, um, obviously. So all the critical things I wanted it to do this thing was uh, was said to be able to do. Now, as luck will have it, since I bought it, I haven't needed to code any injectors. Uh, but uh, the, if uh, when that comes around, hopefully this will this will suffice. But certainly has done all the functions that I've wanted to on my vehicles. Uh, the one thing that this has let me down on is that I was helping a friend of mine out who's got a Subaru, a diesel Subaru. He's DPF was playing up, there's a video on that. We did get it going in, we did repair it and get it going. Um, and I, after getting the deep, uh, read the codes, no problem, found out, yep, DPF's no good. Uh, got all the data on it, how many times it had attempted regeneration, yep, that was all good. All of that was available, worked very, uh, very, very easily. After we repaired the DPF and put it back in again, connect the, uh, the reader, and wanted to do a manual burn and reset the codes. So you go into the DPF regen function, uh, you have to select your make, so you select Subaru, and then it brings up the menu for Renault. I go, well, it's not a Renault, but maybe that's just an error. So I tried to do it, ah, no, it's not a Renault, can't talk to it. Okay, right, I go back out. Uh, maybe Renault and Subaru around the wrong way. Renault, and then the Renault, Murphy's Law, predictably, comes up with Renault correctly, so it wouldn't talk to it. So tried random makes to try and get it to talk. It would not do it. It seems to be a software issue. I've since updated, we've, we've had a few software updates since then, and um, I've updated it, but I don't have the vehicle anymore. How we, um, that vehicle uh, is not mine, it was a, a friend of mine's. And uh, to fix the problem, we borrowed a scan tool uh, to do the regen and then to reset the codes because this wouldn't do it. So that was annoying. That's my biggest bane with scan tools is you really want to do everything, especially if it says that it can do it, it should do it. But that one, to be fair, it does seem like it was a software issue because when you hit Subaru, it took you to the Renault menu rather than the Subaru menu. So hopefully that problem is fixed now. If I get an opportunity to connect it to a Subaru diesel, we'll see what happens. Um, but you know, I'm a um, you know basically the the workshop on the farm now. So we get you know whatever vehicles I have to service, and then you know mates if they've got a problem might come out and ask for a favour. But um, you know that that was a limitation there. Um, that was frustrating. Um, big big touchscreen as I said the touchscreen is worn quite well there are buttons as well but most of the things that you do with this will be on the screen you do have up and down and okay but you know you'll just use your use your hand on it um, to do most of the functions on it this still has you know, I've probably used it 
I don't know, 20 times, 30 times, I don't know, I don't know. I've used it quite a bit. It's held up quite well. It's got a rubberized backing. It's, it's heavy, it's quite solid. It feels like you could, you know, drop it and it's gonna be okay. Um, it's got the original, you know, kind of plastic film screen protector on it. And um, that's, you know, that's still there. There's, there's minor scratching on that. How will it hold up long term? We'll see, but you know, 12 months in, it's okay. We're keeping it in its bag um, in my roll cab, so hopefully it's well protected. Like most of it, as I said, the, the unit itself is quite robust. It has a VGA connector into the cord that goes into your EB, EOBD or EOBD2 port, and the cord is quite heavy. It's rubberized as well. It's quite thick and feels rather sturdy, so no issues there. Um, turn the key, and it will charge off your... Um, uh, off your off your vehicle, and um, and you can also charge it with a with an included uh, USB uh, as well. So options on there. You've got your EOBD, JOBD. You can reset your data. You can update it. Um, this has got an update owing, evidently. Uh, you can uh, review past data. It's pretty good. Connected to the port. So. I did this, I used it last night. I've got a, a, a truck that's um, got a hard start at the moment. I suspect um, I'm not building fuel rail pressure or the batteries were down. It's got a required cranking speed to, um, that, you need, that it needs to crank, otherwise it won't fire. So it was pretty simple. You jump into this, you go into your, your EABD, it does all its automatic connect, and then you just go into data, you select the things you want it to, uh, the live data that you want it to read. In that case, it was, cranking RPM or your, your engine RPM and your fuel rail pressure and then crank the truck and see what it reads. As it turns out the cranking speed was fine. It was well and truly high enough to start the truck, but my fuel rail pressure was only one fifth of normal. So I've got an injector that's draining back or I've got a faulty sensor. So that's my next job to diagnose, but disconnected, gave all the data, no problems at all. I've had no issues with data on this. It's given me all the data on every vehicle I've connected to no problems at all. It's cleared all the codes bar that Subaru, but I suspect that's the, again, software issue as to why it wouldn't clear it. But everything else has worked out absolutely fine and it's, it's worked very, very well. So, um, you know, I bought this for about $400, I, I reckon, my 350, 400, something like that. Uh, I had a look last night before doing this video to see what they're worth. You can pick one of these up now for 250, uh, which is, you know, cheaper again. So generally when I go and have a look at these things after I've owned them for a period of time, I go, well, look, at the end of the day, would I buy this again? Um, you know, the firmware updates are still coming through. That was one of the things I was doubtful of, is this was one of their new models when I bought it. And, you know, so you're generally gonna want some updates and they say, oh, we've got monthly updates, monthly updates. And, you know, yeah, well, you say that, but you know, you're a, you're a, um, you know, you're a new brand, are you gonna last? Are you actually gonna hold up your end of the bargain? Um, is that gonna be something that I can rely upon? As I've found out, yep, the firmware updates come out regularly. Uh, what sort of difference they make inside of it? I haven't noticed anything because the only issue I've had is with that Subaru. Hopefully that is fixed. Uh, and, I did, and you do have the option to, if there is a fault, it does bring up an option and you can send it to launch so that they, um, they're aware of the problem. And I have done that. Didn't get a response specifically, but not necessarily expecting that I would have got a response. But um, sent the sent the request to, to launch, and hopefully they've read that and it's in, it's been included in one of their subsequent um, subsequent firmware updates. So um, I found it quite good today. Would I buy it again? That's generally my yardstick. Well, if I came into the market today. And I said, well, I've got the same requirements that I did 12 months ago. I know I want the scan tool to do this, 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 and this. Um, I could get this for $250. Yeah, I, I'd buy it again. I, I haven't been active looking at EOBD and OBD2 readers over the last uh, 12 months in terms of if there's anything new on the market. These might, guys have probably got a newer model than this one now, uh, but this one is still for sale. Um, yeah, I'd um, unless there was something in their in their um, suite that uh, attracted me to it better for more money or less money, then yeah, I'd buy this again, no problems at all. Um, it's been quite good with that one uh, exception noted. And that's the critical thing is that if you're looking to buy a scan tool, 
you're really going to have to have a look at what you want it to do. And that will determine which one you buy. So if you want to say, look, I just want to read codes and I want to be able to clear codes if it's a basic code, then I'd buy one of them. Not necessarily an Extron's one, but a Bluetooth OBD reader uh, connected to your phone, that'll do that for you. And for $10, $15, like it's cheap insurance. I've got one of these on all the, all the cars I own because if I'm traveling and I throw a code, I want to be able to jump on my phone or in my case, probably the head unit, what's the code? Right, that's it, I can fix that or clear it, keep going, no problem at all. Um, for $10, $15, even $25, even $50, that's pretty cheap insurance to be able to always read your codes. And it's not like having to remember to chuck your full scan tool in your car when you get, every time you go away. You just plug that into the EABD port, the OBD2 port, whatever, and just leave it there. You know, it, you can have it running if you want to look really cool. You know, on my head unit, you can open up the app and, and set the gauges up so you know oh, I've got some really cool digital gauges on there. If that floats your boat, you can have your boost pressure and you can have your, uh, your oil temperature, oil pressure, oil, whatever you want on there, um, RPM, whatever. Um, you can have that on the head unit um, uh, while you're driving. Now, um, and if that's all you want to do, if you say, well, look, if I'm going to throw a serious code, well, I'm just going to take it to someone to fix. Or if I throw a serious code and, the, and this thing won't clear it, or I don't want to clear it, um, then I would take it to the dealership anyway. Well, then that's probably all you need. You probably, for, you know, just someone, you know, fly-by-nighter, you know, home mechanic who only wants to do light duties, or someone who just wants to be able to keep an keep a eye on their engine diagnostics and, and data, that's all you need probably. And because why would you spend more than the, 15, 10, 20 dollars that would require you to get access to that. Um, so if you want to do more than that, then this, this may be the, head, the, the scan tool for you, the CRP479, it may not be. The, if you decide to go with someone like Launch, what I would suggest is you get on their website, you make a list of things that you want to do, the critical things that are deal breakers, I must have this in a scan tool, and these things I'd like to have but don't really care too much and compare all their models and buy the one that suits you best at the price point that you're happy to pay. Um, I was more than happy to pay more than the $400 I paid for this unit. The reason I didn't is because the additional features that I got with the higher value uh, models after this one, I looked at them and I went, I'm not going to use them. Um, or I'm going to use them so rarely, if ever, it's not worth me spending the extra money on. And if I find that I need to do more than this unit will give me, I've tried Launch as a brand that's gonna tell me whether that Launch is worth the additional investment uh, to get a higher value scan tool um, and pay more money for it. Because if this is a, you know, a, a, lump, a lump of crap, then I'll um, you know, get rid of it or I'm only $400, $350, $400 into it rather than $1,000 into it, if it proves to be unreliable. As it turns out, it's proved to be pretty reliable. But would I spend thousands on one? I'd probably want to test it first. Like find a physical retailer if you can. There are some physical retailers. Find a physical retailer, uh, not out where I am, on the region area, but in the metro areas, there are some physical uh, retailers. Find one, ask them to plug it into your car and see if it'll read it. Um, you know, see if you can, you know, do as much as you can. I, I'd want to check, check that out or speak to one, re try and reach out to someone who's got one, um, online forums, social media and such to see if you, they've got any experience with the make and model of your car so that you're reasonably confident that it's going to do everything. But, you know, I, I, it may well be that the issue that I've had is just an anomaly and, and, um, it's not a lingering issue, but in any event, horses for courses. Uh, it will depend on what you're, what you're doing as to what sort of scan tool or OBD reader you're going to need. Uh, just have a look at your requirements and then make that guide your decision. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.